Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Splendor is the game that should have won the Splendor Yara, should have won Game of the Year, and its simplicity is fantastic. It's a great gateway game. This is one of the best games to be released in quite a while. Uh, definitely one of the best gateway games or lighter games that still packs a punch in there. It, you need to get your market efficiency is pretty important in this one, making sure you get the cards and when to change over, kind of like Dominion, when to change over to scoring points um, is super important. There is some luck about when the cards come out, I suppose. You know, if you got a lot of whites and, and those cards don't come out, you know, it can be hosed. But knowing what's out there and what the possibilities are is important. But it's not that type of game. It's a type of game that you want to maximize by what's on the board. And you need to be okay with that and kind of matching up with those extra, uh, extra little family cards that are up there. And I'll show you that in the flow. Um, wonderful game. May have been eclipsed by its app. Um, I find myself playing the app more than I do the hard copy. Uh, in the long term, when I get rid of this, I think it's such a great gateway game that I likely won't. Um, but I could see somebody saying, I want to buy the app and not the physical game. Although it's such a great game that I highly recommend getting it. Um, I don't know a whole lot about Space Cowboys or Mark Andre, but wow. Um... What a game, and it packs a punch. And Everything you've heard good about it has been well-earned, and it has such wonderful, easy concepts and decisions to make. There's only three or four actions you can take on a turn, but they do have implications. It is possible to catch up if you're behind, which is nice. This is one of those games that's just solid in a box. We'll be talking about this 10 years from now. It's type type of game. As long as I keep up the PR of it, as long as... Um, they make it available and keep it available. And the components are out of this world. So much better than what you would think a game of this weight would have. They could have went cheaper on the components and didn't. And they're wonderful for that. Um, the theme is kind of lost on me. I don't even know what the theme is. There's these people, these gems. It doesn't matter really. It, it's it's a theme. Unless you're really just collecting colors to get cards. That hopefully will either give you more... Um, gems of the color each turn or victory points and it, it just works the whole thing just kind of works together it plays in under 30 minutes plays well with 2, 3, or 4 although I probably like it with less players um, it's a wonderful 2 player game highly recommend Splendor and it is a keeper for me and I highly recommend you just if you don't have this go out and buy it you could definitely play this at Thanksgiving with some non-gamers and they'd be able to pick this up instantly Easier to play than Ticket to Ride to me. Here's the box for Splendor. Um, I'll open it up and I'll show you the components. You're going to get a simple rule book. With this giant thing in the front. The rules are very simple. Sure, it could have been a little bit smaller than this, but it gets the job done. Uh, just, you know, one fold over. You're going to get a great insert. Yes, the box is too big. This is all wasted space. Let me show you what you get. You get a number of chits. You can see the artwork on them. They are high, high quality. Much better than this. Not, not better than this game deserves, but much better than what I'm used to getting in these games. You're going to get a number of these tiles. Very, very good cardboard. It's almost like they knew they had a great game here, so they decided to put nice components in it. The artwork is all people staring off in the distance, not smiling. Always warranted and loved. Then you get a number of cards in three different decks, but they all pretty much work the same. Have some victory points, reoccurring what they give you and their cost. Um, the cards are pretty good. They don't, you know, you're not shuffling them all that much. They kind of just go down and sit down in front of you. Um, some of them have more artwork on them than the kind of starter ones that do. But they get the job done very easy. All the icons are huge and big and, and look great. 
the artwork is completely meaningless. I'm not sure the theme comes through in this game, but the components are really, really good. And it all fits very nicely in here, and that's Splendor. The rules for Splendor are very clear. You could learn the rules probably in five minutes or less. You don't have to read it before game night. You can sit down and read it. There's only three or four actions you can take on any given turn. Usually, uh, one or two will be you know taking the chips or uh, building a card. Sometimes you'll take the extra action of two of the same color or the gold and, and picking up a card that seems to be less for me. Maybe it's a lack of strategy on my part. But the rules are very clear. Great job. Solid roll construction. Okay, so here's the game set up and ready to go. Uh, what you have is green, yellow, and blue. This gives you usually a resource, sometimes a victory point. This one will give you a, a middle victory point type and a resource. And the top one will require a lot more. You have to kind of build up towards these, a higher victory point and a resource. Um, you're going to have these three at the top, which if you get, uh, in this case, let me show you how these work. If you get four blue cards and four green, you score three. You win the game, first one, 15 victory points. On your turn, you're going to have, let me put these over here where you guys can see. Um, you can take either three different ones, or you can take two of the same. That's an option. You can take a gold and put any card you want into your hand. If you take this in your hand, you're the only one that can build it. Gold is a wild card. Now, this is not built. It's not doing any good until you pay the resources for it on a turn, but you're the only one that can build it. And that can be very useful if you're looking uh, for something in particular and a card comes out. Otherwise, what you'll do is you'll give up resources to build these cards. Um, you can never have more than... I'll put these up here just so you can see them. You can never have more than 10 tiles at a time. So right now there's nothing I can build. So maybe what I'll do is I'll take a green, a blue, and a brown. So when it comes back to my next turn, I can do blue. I need two of them. I get, need one black and two green. And I can use my wild card for that green. So I pay these back. And I guess I should say you'll have a number of these tokens based on number of players. I take this card and I put it down in front of me. And what this gives me is this gives me a white token, kind of like a unlimited white token, one. So each turn I can use one white token for free and I don't actually need the token. So a new card comes out. And the idea is as you start building these, you kind of get an engine going. This one gives me victory points. So I now have a blue, a white, and a red every time. So when I start building these things, I need to grab less and less of those to do that and you kind of get your engine going until you get 15 points now those count for points those got, and those three they never get replaced you get points on these and the, the tokens are not worth any points and that's splendor so you're, what you're going to be doing is taking three different two of the same or you can take a gold and any card and put it in your hand now if you want to play it it does take require a turn you would have to play this on your turn, or you can buy any face-up card. Very easy to play, a lot of great decisions, very addicting, and very fun. Splendor. Who should buy this game? This is one of those games I think should be in most, if not all, collections. It's a great gateway game. You know, it's it's in the gateway games that I would use with Ticket to Ride, things of that nature. Um, the app, I've gotten so many people onto the app with this and just become addicted to it. It's such a fun app to play solo well against the artificial intelligence of the computer. Um, if you don't have this game, I would recommend you picking it up instantly. Now, you may look at this game and say, I played it and don't love it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but it's something you can pull out to bring gamers in. I think having two to five of those games in your collection, depending on the size of your collection can be very, very important, and Splendor is a great way to bring people into that resource management type thing. Um, so I highly recommend Splendor. It is a keeper for sure.